We live in a world where filmmakers have lost their imagination, so of course there's going to be another big Hollywood reboot. But what this time? Of course, Flash Gordon. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. So, producer John Davis has been trying to make a reboot of the Flash Gordon original comics for quite some time. He wanted to make an animated movie and has had a couple of very high profile directors in line to do this. Matthew Vaughan and Julius Avery are both big budget Hollywood directors and at different times they've both been signed on to do this film. But now they've moved on and Taika Waititi is now writing and in line to direct not an animated movie but a live action big budget film. Now, this has ha basically happened because Taika Waititi was asked if he would mind writing this because they were, you know, really struggling to make the project work. He got stuck in mainly because of his love for the original movie. He said when he was a kid it was one of his favourite films and to be honest, if you watch Thor Ragnarok, you can really see the obvious inspiration. When he got stuck into it though and started writing the script, he realised this didn't really work as an animated movie. He wanted to do it as a live action film. So he got onto the phone. He called John Davis. He said, come on man, we need to make this live action. And John Davis's reaction was, oh hell yeah. Taika Waititi is kind of the man in Hollywood at the moment. Everything he touches really pretty much turns to gold. And really he completely reinvigorated the Thor franchise with Ragnarok. But this is a quite a dangerous franchise. It's, it's quite a difficult thing to get your head around and to get right. I can see the dangers of this film and this film going very, very wrong. We only have to look at Sci-Fi Channel's attempt to reboot this a few years ago to know that this really can become a very cheesy character really quickly if you let it. Taika Waititi is the man to do this. He really is the man to get this, the balance between the, the cheesiness, the humour, the adventure and the, the, the real gritty realism that we're going to want from this, this franchise. Because if you really think about the Flash Gordon movie, it's about Earth getting attacked, obviously, by Ming the Merciless. Um, and one man, other than being a bit of a sport hero, has really nothing about him. He's not particularly bright. He's not particularly special in lots of different ways. He can throw a ball far, and that's about it. But in the face of danger, he steps up. And he inspires the entire planet of Mongo to turn against Ming. Now, we live in quite a fractured society at the moment. Wouldn't it be amazing for somebody like Flash Gordon to step up and inspire us to come together? This is the kind of movie that I actually think could be quite inspiring. It could be more than just a really colourful adventure in space. It could actually reflect a lot of things in society now that we wish we could change. And I always love that in sci-fi when it's more than just one layered film action movie. When there are, you know, there's more to it. I already know what people are going to say. They're going to make it woke. They're going to make it Flash Jennifer or something. That sounds wrong, but that sounds like an adult movie. But anyway, um, I, and I don't think that's a risk with this film. The male role in this as, as Flash Gordon isn't necessarily like the traditional hero. Even though, yes, okay, he's a jock um, and he's, you know, he's the sports star sort of thing. He's, he has his flaws um, and it's even maybe even because of his flaws that he succeeds rather than his physical ability in lots of ways. But also in this film, there are already big female characters. Even Flash Gordon's love interest, Dale Arden. Okay, she runs around a lot and gets captured a lot, and everybody falls in love with her, and everyone's trying to sleep with her all the time. And you know, but her character through the arc of the comics, in particular, grew massively. In the first couple of comics, she didn't even say a word, but by the end of it, she was assisting. She was growing as a scientist. She was, her, her importance was growing in defending the Earth. You know, um, even though she continued to get captured every five minutes, and Flash Gordon could save her. Her character grew, and she became an actual really important, strong female role. And I'm going to say, this is a this is a movie like all of these films from back in the 60s, 70s, 80s will need modernising. And I'm not, again, I know a lot of people are going to say, why? Why does it need to be changed? 
It needs to be changed because we have a modern audience. Expectations are different. Society is different. We're talking about strong female characters. You've got Princess Aura. Now, she's Ming the Merciless' daughter, and she is, at times, ruthless. But she turns against and stands up to her dad. She does fall in love with Flash Gordon, and she does try to thwart Dale constantly. But she is a strong female character. She stands up for what she wants. That, that little love triangle there is a really interesting plot. And something that I'm actually sure Taika Waititi will really enjoy exploring. And then you've got General Kala. Who is a complete... I mean, you want to talk about strong female characters. This chick is a nutter. She is completely ruthless. Um, she is obviously top of the military, a general within the military. She is intelligent, beautiful, and, you know, completely evil. She's a brilliant character, and again, you're talking about this series being woke and changing genders or doing what else. You don't need to. You've got incredibly strong female characters. We might need to update what they're wearing a little bit, because in the movie they do wander around in bejeweled bikinis quite a lot. We've moved on from that, unfortunately. You know, I, I like seeing women in bikinis. I just do. But we've moved on from that in big Hollywood movies correctly. So, so you know, we'll see a little bit more a respect towards the female genders. Talking about clothing, though, what Brian Blessed was wearing was basically leather armour, wings and hot pants. Um, so maybe we need a bit more respect towards the male characters as well. <laughs> I don't need to see Brian Blessed's legs. So when is this likely to happen? Well... Taika Waititi has got several other projects on the go at the moment. As I say, he really is the man in Hollywood at the moment. Um, he has is a new project called Next Goal Wins. He's then got Thor, Love and Thunder. He's then got an unnamed Star Wars project that he's directing. This will come after those. So we're probably not talking until, you know, maybe two years down the line until we can actually see this in theatres. But I do think he's writing it now. It's basically greenlit already. Um, anything that Taika Waititi puts his name to at the moment is going to get greenlit. So this is going to happen. It's just a matter of how quickly you can get to it. And but who might star in it? Who is going to be our Flash Gordon? Well, obviously, the rumours are already around Chris Hemsworth. Obviously, the relationship between Taika Waititi and Chris Hemsworth, thanks to the Thor movies, they're, they're, they're really, they are really good friends. There's always going to be those rumours. I'd maybe like to see somebody a bit younger play the Flash Gordon role. I'd like to see him, you know, as a as a coming out of college um, quarterback, maybe as a, maybe as a failed quarterback, um, something like that. I think Chris Evans may be a little bit older already, and, and the other name being thrown around is Chris Evans, um, and I think he's that's the same thing. But saying that, Chris Evans would be amazing in this role. He's brilliant in everything, and I, honestly, he probably would be the perfect Flash Gordon. What are the big challenges for this role? I've already mentioned this film, it really is at risk of becoming cheesy if you let it. It's one of those things that's so big, so colourful, it can get away from you really easily. And um, I think Taika Waititi's got the skill to not let it go too far. He did that in Ragnarok. He pushed right up to the line of ridiculous, but he never crossed it. And that's why that movie is so brilliant. He's also got that talent of getting the music right, which I think is a massive part of when you're doing something that's very big and very sort of at risk of becoming stupid. The right music can just tone it and keep it that this side of sensible that it doesn't get too ridiculous. A really big challenge is how do you match up to the original movie? Because you've got characters like Brian Blessed's Prince Voltan. And iconic moments like Flash Gordon's alive and paying homage to the movie without, again, crossing that line into cheesy is a big ask. But I honestly think Taika Waititi is the man to answer that question and to make a movie that we will all really, really love. And honestly, I cannot wait for a Flash Gordon reboot. This is one of those films that's screaming out for a modern version, and I can't wait. So if you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out. You can join the channel and see all of our videos 24 hours before everybody else, um, and it also really helps me to make new content and supports the channel. You can also go and join us on Facebook. The link is in the description. So please stay safe, and I will see you next time. <laughs>